It don't matter how hot the girls are. If your music is lame, we can help with that, though. The Professional Adult Nightclub DJ Association presents Panda Off the Charts. Brand new tracks for the strip club industry to make your set sound fresher, more energized, and to keep things bumping. Here are your hosts, Danny Myers, Elon Fong, and Bob Chia Party. Bob and Elon, man, I'll tell you what. First of all, Bob, you scored one hell of a guest here today. Yes. Well, look at this. Joining us right now. From the band Candle Box, we've got Kevin Martin here with us. How are you, Kevin? I'm good, man. I've just noticed nothing says rock and roll like a pink T-shirt. <laughs> there you go. Man. man you have one of the most rock and roll voices around. Just let me start off by saying, without a doubt, in my opinion, I'm a former vocalist. I think you had the best voice of the guys in the 90s. A lot of the other guys were kind of mush mouth and sang on the back of their throat. And did that. You have a fucking phenomenal voice. Always had great range. You're a killer singer. Big fan. And the last time I got to see you guys uh three songs into your set you were playing an outdoor festival here in ohio there was like a hurricane come the remnants of a hurricane so they had dayton, to shut it down yeah. you remember okay yeah i was in dayton yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the last time i got to see you guys i didn't see you at the newport here in columbus ohio when i was in college uh on your first tour in like 92 93 something like that but right uh, on, man well, thank you yeah you're a great very kind. thank you very great much <laughs> I got to see the band very recent, like last week here in Nashville. And I'll tell you, Kevin still sounds amazing. Dude, you, oh, you crushed that. It was a great show. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, Candlebox, 30 years. I mean, you think about 30 years ago, you guys formed this band. Uh, and with a couple of, of uh, interruptions in there, now you're back and you've got a great new sound. You've got a new song. Uh, that is absolutely outstanding all downhill from here, which we're going to listen to in just a little bit. But before we do that, I know Alon has a, another question for you before we uh, bring that song on. Yeah, so I mean, this this album sort of came out over a longer period of time. And just from what I've heard, I haven't heard all the tracks, but I've heard a bunch. Of, it's really a lot of different sounds for you. It sounds like you had fun experimenting um, in different tempos and different styles of rock songs. Tell me a little bit about how that came to be. Well, we, we've always... Um, I think Candlebox has always prided itself. Um, uh, if that's the word I'm looking for, um, on just doing what we want to do. Um, we, we use our influences and our inspirations, uh, every day. I think all of us as human beings do. And I think it's important as a musician to do the same thing. If you're inspired by something or if something moves you, um, to, to feel, uh, the opportunity to create something you should. And what we did with this record was we just didn't stop ourselves. If we felt the song was going Americana, we went Americana. If we felt the song was going progressive, we went progressive. Very similar to like, um, you know, let's say a Nothing But Thieves band would do where they have those moments of, of great, epic, um, anthemic, beautiful, incredible songs and then have those intimate, uh, beautiful acoustic pieces. That's, I think, what makes European rock and roll so much more appealing than American rock and roll is that they've never been forced to um, stay in their path, if you will. Um, and that's kind of how I've always um, thought that Candlebox should be and kind of how we, we always did it. Um, I mean, everything from Happy Pills, which was a complete departure from the debut album, yeah. uh, and, and as well as Lucy was a complete departure from the debut album. So we've always pushed those envelopes. And I think that's what we tried to do with this record was let's see how much further we can go. And we did that by not really limiting ourselves and not putting an allowance uh, on, um, on creativity, you know, just letting it flow as far as we wanted to. You mastered that well. This is a very cool album. I can't wait to hear the Thank rest you. of it. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do right now is uh, play about a minute of All Downhill from here, and then we're going to come back and, and talk about the song and, and talk about what you guys have got going in the future. So let's do that about one minute. This is Candlebox new track, All Downhill from here, and uh, here it is.
I went over a minute. I love the song. <laughs> yeah, it's a great song. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go first here. Um, one of the coolest things I think about this this Candlebox sound right now. You you've been around for 30 years, as we've already established that. But you have bands that were out for 20 years ago, etc. And um, they continue to play music and they continue to release music, and it all still sounds the same. They haven't changed. And then you have other bands that were out in this, you know, for 20 or 30 years, and they've completely changed their sound to where you don't even recognize it. What you have done here, Kevin, is is balance those two. You still hear the original Candlebox sound, but you're going in a new direction, but you're still keeping the Candlebox signature. Does that make sense, what I said? Yeah, and I think that, I mean, listen, the, the one common thread through all of it is the voice has never changed. So, you know, um, and I think that that's, you know, if you look at um, the opportunities that have been brought about uh, over the years for, you know, any number of singers and rock bands, you know, to leave and go sing for somebody else, you know, generally they don't want to do it. Um, it's really hard to restart uh a new you know a new project or something so i mean even though i've done the high watts um i've done the gracious view with the guys from live uh i have le projet with morgan rose um from seven dust you know those are all those are all just um those are treats you know i mean candlebox has always been my bread and butter <coughs> excuse me um and so i i think that what I've done over these years is, is I've made Candlebox not, you know, some of its parts, but it is, it is the whole that I think people have, have continued to, um, to get drawn to. Our sound has always kind of um, been on the blues based side of rock and roll. There's always been a little bit of a, of an alternate um, uh, vibe to it, alternative vibe to it. It's never been your kind of straight ahead, um, you know, uh, if you will, a mainstream rock and roll sound it's it, it's always been that i've used every single ounce of my library of musical inspiration in every song i write so i, I and it's an example like this when i wrote this with christopher thorne from blind melon our conversation existed um entirely or, or revolved entirely around the fact that his career with shannon H uh, hoon was very short-lived even though blind melon's still around and still producing they've got a great singer travis who's a fantastic musician and a brilliant singer as well. Um, but their, their life was so short with Shannon and, and, and for produce some really brilliant music. Um, and in my situation, what we discussed was when Barty left the band, when Scott left the band, when Pete left the band, we were going through those types of uh, emotions and, and discussion about what that does to you as an artist and how do you continue to produce um, music that you feel represents that sound. And, and in our case, Chris was like, well, that's just because you've been the common thread. And, and he said, and the nice thing was that you took that time between the first album and Happy Pills to expand what the band was capable of doing. So your fans grew with you. He said, unfortunately, Blind Melon, we were such a jam band. We were, right. it revolved around Shannon's brilliant writing and, 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 lyrics and songwriting and all that great stuff that he felt they were pigeonholed. So, um, and I've known Christopher for 25 years, so uh, I'd never had that discussion with him. And, and that's what became the song. I mean, it was really our conversation that allowed us to produce that. And, and, but like I was saying, you know, he was, he said the same thing. I've been the common thread. So if it's, if you had a different singer come in and maybe Pete and Barty were back or Pete, Barty and Scott, I don't really know what would happen. Um, mm -hmm. I think that you'd have certainly you'd have some fans that maybe liked it. Um, but I think most people are like, what, what's happened here? You, you know, because they've had 30 years of that one constant, you know? 
And I, I think uh, to, to tackle both of what you guys said, you know, the lead singer, the vocals are what the average person connects to. Maybe musicians connect to the guitar and drums, but the average person is really on the lyrics and the vocals, right? And if yeah. you look at every major band that changed singers, they became a different band, whether it was Sammy Hagar taking over Van Halen. I love Van Hagar, but it's a totally different band. Motley Crue, John Karabi. I love that Motley Crue record. I wouldn't have called it Motley Crue, but, <laughs> but it's a great record. You know what I mean? But it's such a distinct change. And you... Touching on what you said, I think what separates you a lot from the vocalists of the 90s is you have a lot of soul. Like you said, there's a lot of blues in there. A lot of the other guys were more screamers. And I mean, Cornell was a great vocalist, obviously. Um, but uh, just pure singing capabilities, other than maybe Cornell, I, I can't think of anyone in that era who who could do a lot of what you do. And that soul is such a big part of it. That's what separates you, too. You're not just chops. You know what I mean? There's a lot of feeling. Yeah. And even this song um, is great because... I don't know if you wrote it during the pandemic and I was going to ask you is, did that make you introspective? Cause it's a very much looking back sort of song, right? Looking back on your career, looking back in the last 30 years. Uh, and you, you know, hopefully it's not all down from here, from here for you guys. You're also very talented and have a lot more, I think to say musically, but uh, was that sort of it or was this written pre pandemic? No, this was written pre pandemic. It was it, like, the, like I was saying, the conversation I have with Christopher got us, got us to thinking about, what our careers were and that's how the lyrics came about you know and i'll also i'm, I'm also going to interject that i jokingly have said this on stage that you know i wrote this in my doctor's office but um <laughs> it's a true story I, I was getting my physical my 40th um, birthday physical and my doctor said to me you know with the ad finger up my ass talking about my prostate <laughs> um, that's he, when you record me, those high notes right <laughs> he said uh he said hey listen you know so it's all downhill from here you know your body starts to die and i was like what the fuck are you talking about i mean i was like dude don't ever fucking say that to anybody ever again he's like well it's true you know you need to understand that things are going to slow down and i was like yeah go fuck yourself man. <laughs> so um so that's kind of you know i that's where the title came from but really it, it did come from that conversation with christopher about our careers and the peaks i mean we both peaked very very early Blind Melon and Candlebox. And and with that great success game, you know, enormous amount of stress and um, and struggle. And, you know, I, and all downhill from here is not really a bad thing. It means that things get a little bit easier from, from now on. You know, I don't care about, you know, the great success of Candlebox coming back or, you know, I mean, sure, would it be nice to have four tour buses and 17 semis and be the Foo <laughs> Fighters or something like that? Yeah. Absolutely. But that also brings a lot of fucking, you know, negative. It also brings a lot of expense and an enormous amount of stress again. So I'm really happy where I'm at. And my life is pretty fucking good, man. You know, and, and if this is if this is what it is from now on and this is how I live it. I'm cool. Very yeah, nice. Great career. Right. And that's awesome. Yeah. Bob, Chia Party, you're with StripJointsMusic.com. You have this song on your program. So register DJs. If you haven't already grabbed it, uh, go over to Bob's site and uh, and get it. If you're not registered, go register. Bob, tell me a little bit about how this is working for you and uh, and what you see for it. It's wor it's working really good. I'm expecting this to chart on the top 20 uh, this month and uh, go from there. Again, it's just, again uh, to me it's a it's a great strip song, strips club song. It's got the grind. It's got the sleazy guitar. It's got everything you'd want. I can just see the girl spinning around the pole. So, <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it, gentlemen. Uh, Enjoy it. Get Kevin in trouble with the misses. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it has a whole new meaning all the way downhill from here, right? When she's at the top of the pole, she's got to come down. That's all. <laughs> all, down, all down pole from here. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you get a, a separate version made there. And there <laughs> you know, I, I have uh, been playing the song for about two weeks now because Bob sent it to me. And I did chart it, by the way. Um, and I got to say to DJs out there, man, you've got to play this because, I mean, not only does it sound great, you know, on the phone and, you know, on the computer speakers, but man, when that kicks in on the big sound system in the club, it drives, yes. it punches. It's really good. I have um, I have an entertainer who is a huge Candlebox fan, and I haven't got to work with her yet since <laughs> I got this song because we've been working separate days. Um, but uh, her name is Autumn, and I, I know she's going to love this song, and uh, I can't wait to to play that for her. Would you say a little hi to Autumn for me? Hey, Autumn. It's Kevin from Candlebox. How are you? <laughs> she'll love that. She'll, yeah, she'll love that. <laughs> Um, do you have, uh, I won't see you anytime soon, <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, but if you ever do get to date in Ohio, you'll have to, uh, yeah, maybe I'll bring her to your show. No, I'll bring her, to, I'll bring her as my date to the show. 
<laughs> Speaking well, I was of- just in Cleveland last night. Could have brought it to that. Oh, oh no, really? Missed it. Oh my goodness. Um, where are you? Uh, where are you? are you touring right now? Yeah, we're in Minneapolis right now. Or I'm sorry, Milwaukee. We play uh, Summerfest tomorrow, so we have a day off here. And then we go down to Chicago and over to Indy, uh, playing the Vogue in Indy. And then we make our day, uh, our way down the coast, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, etc. Yeah. Wow. Indy's if they don't already, where can uh, fans find you? Uh, your social media handles, or I assume Kinderbox website, obviously. Yeah, I mean, CandleboxRocks.com has all the links, but we're on Instagram. Um, we're on uh, Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, Reddit. Um, I'm doing a Reddit Q&A tomorrow. I mean, it's, you know, it's all about kind of moving this record and, and trying to reach as many people as you can. So we're doing a lot of that social media stuff. I mean, I run it all. Um, I, I don't like management doing, you know, posts for me or anything. So um, pretty much that all comes from from my thumbs. But mm. yeah, it's, it's out there. Well, the album drops tomorrow, people, September 17th. Make sure you pick it up. The whole thing is amazing. Thank you, man. Yeah, for sure. And when you I, said when you said Indy, it kind of perked my ears up a little. I'm only two hours from Indy. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we may have to head up to Indy. I, I may have to get Bob to send you a message and see if you can get me in up there. So uh <laughs> I would I'd love to come out and, and check that out. So uh, man, um first of all, thank you so much for taking time out. I know you are an extremely busy person. You're on the road, you're writing, you're you're recording, you're doing everything. And I know this is a this is a, a pleasure and a privilege for us to have you on our Absolutely. show. So uh big thank you, man. Kevin Martin oh, Candlebox. And uh when you get more music coming out and when you need to release it, just get with Bob and uh we'll we'll get this out to the strip clubs for you. You got it. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it. No more hurricane shows. I want to see the whole set sometime. (laughs) You got it. There you go. Thank you, Kevin. Take care, Kevin. Thank you, you guys. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to Panda Off the Charts. Presented by the Professional Adult Nightclub DJ Association. Now you know what's new. Get a full list of tracks from this show and previous shows at pandaoffthecharts.com.